Hey there, fellas. Thank y'all for tuning in tonight to Cooking with Johnny Clyde. You're in for a treat. We are going to be making from scratch macaroni and cheese. And we're gonna be doing that by making a bechamel sauce and then adding our shredded cheese. It's gonna be so yummy and ooey gooey. So thank y'all for tuning in and let's go. Okay, fellers, let's start this mac and cheese. First thing we're gonna to wanna to do is get our big pot here and we're gonna fill it up with some water. Okay, we have our pot filled with some water and it's filled just slightly halfway. We're gonna get our salt. Put a decent amount of salt in there. Not a ton, you know. Uh, you can always add salt and pepper later in the process, but this is just to get some salty water for the old macaronis. Okay, I'll say that's good. We're gonna stir that up here. Easier film over here than just put all this on the stove, so just get this ready however you want. You can do this over the stove, you know. Okay. And we have one pound of macaroni elbows, and you can use whichever shape you want. These are nice to me. They're nice and traditional and fancy. So we're gonna take those. We're gonna have them open. We're not gonna add those yet. Okay, so now let's take our pot over there to the stove and we'll get this water boiling. And I like to put my water at about an eight on the bowl just to get it rumbling and then we'll turn it down once we add the noodles. Okay guys, the next step is going to be shredding our cheese. I have four ounces of cheddar here, sharp cheddar, and I have four ounces of Colby Jack. And you can use whichever kind of cheese you want. These are the two Johnny Clyde likes. Toward the end there, Parmesan cheese. But this is gonna be the foundation and let's go ahead and get shredded. Okay, let's shred. You wanna use fresh blocks of cheese rather than the sh shredded cheese right outside of the bag. Uh, it's gonna be a lot creamier. They add this stuff at the factory on the shredded cheese that makes it stay together in the bag, doesn't get all you know clumpy together. So uh, if you do it like this, you're gonna get a much better product. You can use the shredded cheese if you like. It'll be easier, it just won't be as creamy. That's just a preference Johnny Clyde has. Be careful not to shred your finger. We don't want any uh, macaroni and shredded cheese, uh, shredded finger cheese. Now for the Colby Jack. Okay guys, we got all of our cheese shredded. Let's put that on the plate and then head on over to the stove and we're gonna start our bechamel. And that's gonna be the sauce that you create to build up this tasty cheese combination. So let's head on over. Okay, fellers, go ahead and turn your burner on to a medium high heat. That's gonna be about a seven on your stove and let your pan start getting hot. And let's zoom on in and we'll start our bechamel. Okay, guys, you can see we got our two tablespoons of butter here and our two tablespoons of flour. You wanna use equal parts when you're making a roux regardless of what roux you're making. And we're gonna be making a blonde roux for this bechamel, okay? So let's take the two tablespoons of butter. Whoop, Johnny Clyde done cook the wrapper too. Your butter is melting there. Just get it going, get it melted. Okay guys, you wanna use a wooden spoon in this process when you're making a roux, especially if you're gonna make a dark roux, you know, we're making a blonde, but it's good procedure anyways. Use a wooden spoon, a good solid wooden spoon. You wanna do this because if you're using some plastic utensils, especially a cheap plastic utensil, that utensil will start melting in that roux. Believe Johnny Clyde, he did it the first time he made a roux, making some jambalaya. And we had to dump it all out and start over, but you know, when you start making roux, you learn that kind of stuff. So get your butter going. We don't want it to burn. Okay, we're nice and melted there. Let's add our flour, two tablespoons of flour. And once you get the flour in there, start stirring and don't stop stirring till you're done. You do not want to burn the roux. Cause then it'll be all nasty, you gotta start over, you done wasted your butter and flour. But man, I wish you could smell this. I know it just gets started, but gosh, butter smells so good. We want it to kind of get a little pasty and then a blonde color. You don't want it to get too dark. Cause you know this is gonna be a bechamel. 
which is flour, butter, you know, your roux, equal parts, and then you add your milk, and that is your bechamel sauce. Classic French sauce, but you know, foundation of all kinds of different things, different sauces, macaroni and cheese being a big one. And this is so easy, guys. If you're not making macaroni and cheese at home from scratch like this, you're missing out. As you can tell, we're starting to get blonde there. We're gonna let this cook about another minute, and then we're gonna add our milk in. So this is what you would call a blonde roux. Okay guys, we're gonna go ahead and add in our whole milk. We're gonna be using one cup of whole milk. Just add that in. One cup. And then just start stirring. We're gonna turn the heat down a little under medium. So I got about a four on my scale there. Don't want this to get too hot. And we're gonna let this cook for two minutes. Stir it as you go along over the two minutes. It's gonna get thick. You want it to get to the consistency of a gravy. And it is looking so good. While we're cooking this, I wanna thank you guys for tuning in. It's great making these recipes with y'all. It's so much fun to eat them, to make them. And I tell you, life can be tough sometimes. A good meal can make everything all good, even if it's just for a little while, you know. It's good to have a, a nice meal. And one, the macaroni and cheese is a wonderful, tasty treat. Okay, we're thickening up pretty good. I also want to thank y'all for checking out my mom's videos, Sassy Clyde Cooks. She does my recipes, but she makes them in a simpler, quicker, cheaper, faster manner, but turns out so tasty. This is what she would make for me, the, some of these recipes. You can see it's about a gravy consistency now. Uh, so the bechamel is complete. We're gonna add our cheese. Cheese is in. And that was four ounces of cheddar and four ounces of Colby Jack. Get her all stirred up there. Okay guys, now time to add our macaroni to our boiling water. We're gonna let this cook for about four minutes. It's gonna remain cooking under the uh, sauce. So you don't want it completely cooked. So four minutes and then we're gonna add the cheese and you know the noodles are gonna cook with the cheese. It's gonna be so tasty. Occasionally stir your noodles there. Okay, your cheese has been going for about a minute and a half. Now we're gonna add four ounces of Parmesan. And I got some grated Parmesan. I didn't grate this myself. Uh, got it from Whole Foods. Nice and tasty. You can get it from wherever you'd like. Whole Foods uh, had it. Walmart was out. So add your grated cheese. We're gonna leave an ounce for our topping later. Okay, now stir. And this is gonna cook for about three minutes. We are gonna add some salt and pepper to this. Just a little, we can add more to taste later, but we do want to have some salt and pepper in it. So just a few grinds, you know, make it nice and tasty looking. You can see it's starting to bubble a little bit. It looks so good. Some tasty homemade mac and cheese from scratch, guys. How about that? And we're gonna go ahead and get our oven preheated too because we're gonna put all this in the oven to finish cooking. Okay, we're gonna turn our heat off and strain our noodles real fast. Time is up on those bad boys. Now time to pour our strained noodles into the casserole dish. Whoa, we made a mess there. <laughs> Just ignore Johnny Clyde. That's when we got a pound of it. We got some extras. <laughs> now time to add our cheese sauce to the noodles while it's all nice and hot. 
Okay, Margaret, now let's pour. Ooh, yummy, yummy. Look at that gooey cheese. Make sure we get it all there. Okay, guys, now we got the noodles in there. Let's just mix them up a little bit. Get them all friendly. You wanna undercook your noodles by about three to four minutes from what the recipe says on the box because this cheese sauce is so hot that it's gonna remain cooking once you add it. Doesn't that look yummy? And wasn't that so easy? We got our oven preheating to 350 behind us, so we're gonna put that in there and uh, finish her off, but we got a few more steps, so just hang tight. Okay, we, so we got all the macaroni in the pot with the cheese mixture in there, and we're just gonna let this sit for a second while we go toast our breadcrumbs. So follow me on back over to the stove. Okay guys, we got a medium high heat on our small pan here. We're gonna put about a one and a half tablespoons of butter. This is butter that we use to grease our pan. And we're just gonna heat this up till it's all melted. This is one cup of panko breadcrumbs. We've added our one and a half, two tablespoons of butter and use the regular panko breadcrumbs. Don't get the Italian seasoned or seasoned, just get the regular breadcrumbs. And we're gonna toast these, and this is gonna be a topping on our mac and cheese. Okay, our butter's nice and melted, so now let's take our breadcrumbs. One cup of panko breadcrumbs. And we're just gonna toast these. Just toast them until, you know, they look nice and golden brown. You'll see here in a minute, but nothing crazy. Just monitor it. You can see it's starting to get a little golden brown there. Okay, guys. Now we're getting somewhere. This is about done. It's going to go a little longer. Just make sure you stay on top of it. Don't want this to burn, just want it to be toasty. I'm gonna say that's good. You know, we gotta put it uh, back in the oven later so it's gonna cook a little more. Before we put the panko breadcrumbs on there that have been toasted, we're gonna add a little salt and pepper. Don't add too much. Your individual diners are gonna wanna add some possibly to it, uh, but you don't wanna add too much because they can't take it away. Now we're gonna add our panko breadcrumbs. You just want to cover this whole thing here. Start kind of slow and then you can add more as you go, you know. But we want to make sure we layer the whole thing. Okay guys, we got it covered in the panko breadcrumbs. Now we're going to add our Parmesan cheese. And that's about an ounce of grated Parmesan cheese. It's going to be so tasty. We're just going to cover the dish in that. Not too much, you know, you want it to be pretty with the, the toasted uh, panko crumbs on there. Pretty, nice and pretty. Dust it over the top there, and I, I think that's all we're going to use on this. Okay, fellas, the macaroni and cheese is in the baking dish. We got it covered with the panko crumbs and the parmesan. And now it's time to put this in our preheated 350 degree oven. Okay, that's in the oven, and we're gonna let it go for 15 minutes, and we'll come back and check on. See y'all in a little bit, fellas. Okay, guys, we just pulled our tasty mac and cheese out of the oven, and oh, does it smell so good, look so good. Here we go, guys. Look at that, is that amazing or what? Thank y'all for tuning in as Johnny Clyde cooked. He is from scratch, homemade, Macaroni and cheese. Man, it looks so tasty. I can't wait to dig in. Let's go ahead and put some on our plate. Okay, here we go. Ooh, I can hear the ooey gooeyness. Wow, guys. Look at that. Doesn't that look yummy? Okay, let's give her a try.
Wow. Nice, crunchy, ooey gooey and delicious. If this was Johnny Cloud Eats, I'd give it a 10 out of 10. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Mmm, with some good stuff. Well, fellas, thanks for tuning in. Y'all go check out Sassy Cloud's channel. That's where she recreates my recipes and makes her own recipes. But she makes them quicker, simpler, and easier. Go check out her YouTube. I'll have it linked in the description. I want to thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, follow, hit the notification bell, and share with all your friends. Thank you all for tuning in, fellas. Johnny Cloud out.